very beautiful observation general observation of mahavakya you can call it a theory of like grand unified theory is there a theory of everything they're talking about in physics and cosmology so like the theory of everything in vedanta and philosophy let's say theory of everything in philosophy mahavakya is that it gives you the totality of of spirituality or religion it's all packed into mahavakya just take tattvamasi that thou art so that refers to saguna brahman or ishwara thou refers to the individual our real nature think about it all religions in the world are either in that category or thou category tat category or tvam category what do i mean by that look at christianity islam judaism in our hinduism also look at vaishnavism shaktaism um, shaivism they are all theistic religions god exists who is god always one common thing in across the religions god is the creator of the universe in hinduism little further god is creator sustainer and dissolver of the universe srishti sthiti pralaya karta brahma sutra defines what is brahman when you say uh, brahma jigyasa inquiry into brahman what is this brahman janmadyasya yatah that from which birth etc this universe take place asya jagata janma sthiti bhanga yasmat tad brahma this entire universe from where it has come in which it subsists and into which it shall dissolve again that is brahman what brahman is being defined there saguna brahman ishvara so ishvara is being defined there tat means ishvara saguna brahman creator of the universe that is vachya now we know all the technical things we know that is vachya artha and just keep vachya artha hold on to the direct meaning so one kind of religion the most common kind of religion, especially in the west that is the only kind of religion that is understood um, so if you don't believe in god then it's not a religion that is the problem that's why they are very confused here people are confused by buddhism that how can buddhism be a religion in india we understand religion is of two kinds two broadly two kinds uh, tat god centered religion the other kind is tvam the self inquiry based religion what is what example buddhism jainism and within uh, hinduism sankhya yoga they are all based on inquiry into oneself self inquiry so advaita no 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 wait not advaita so sankhya yoga buddhism jainism they are all in, i'm painting in broad picture you say no no they worship buddha as god that's a different thing later on these things came into buddhism but initially and if you see buddhist philosophy philosophically speaking strictly speaking buddhism does not accept god jainism also does not accept god it's a quest for liberation of the self inquiry into the self liberation of the self um you some mind might object but buddhism does not believe in the self also they are right not in the sense that hindu dualists believe but it is still an inquiry into oneself liberation for oneself how can i get freedom from suffering so the concern is with the with the subject with the person so self inquiry based religions and god seeking religions tat religions tvam religions and if you notice they are quite different the tat based religions god based religions are mostly bhakti paths paths of devotion faith if you start inquiring does god exist a problem so there are paths of bhakti you will find temple mosque church that is the center you will find devotional activities bhajan and kirtan and chanting ritual lot of rituals especially in um, the the hindu varieties of tat oriented religions but also in christianity in uh, islam and all of that you will find the main method is uh, belief faith prayer surrender that is the tat oriented religions there will be festival there will be food and singing and so that's one kind the other kind look at buddhism jainism or patanjali yoga sankhya it will be more philosophical more meditative more monastic often yeah. the center will not so much be big temples but it may be 
monasteries, it may be meditation halls. It's more inward looking. So based on psychophysical practices, more intellectual maybe, another kind of religion, dom based approach. And it is all very natural that these two should be there. Why? Because look at our structure of our experience, subject, object. Either we see the world outside or we look at ourselves. These are the only two things which we are aware of, the world and ourselves, subject and object. So if you have religion, one kind of religion will be around the object. What is the reality of this universe? God. Or another kind of religion might be inquiry into myself. Who am I? What am I? How can I go beyond sorrow? That is the Buddhistic or Jaina approach. Our psychology is also like that. So among spiritual seekers, you will find two kinds. Here you will find one kind because you are Advaitins, but you'll find these two kinds of uh, seekers. I have seen the young boys who came to be monks in Belurmat in Ramakrishna order. If you ask, I used to ask sometimes, so what do you want? Why are we here to be sadhus, monks? What are you seeking? Two kinds of answers I got. One say, I want to realize God, God realization. I want to see God. Good, very good. Other one says that I want to know who am I? Self-realization. See, see, two approaches, psychologically two approaches. And the natures of these two persons are generally different. I'm, I'm oversimplifying a little bit. Now, the point what I'm trying to make is, I'm coming to Advaita now. Each approach has its advantage and disadvantages. It is its strength and weakness. What is the great weakness of the God-based approach, the faith-based approach, the theistic approach? The great weakness is that it depends on faith, on belief. If you question it, then the thing is threatened. Especially in today's world, that's a real problem. If you seriously question it. I've seen many people coming to Advaita Vedanta who started off as atheistic or agnostic, skeptical. When you become seriously interested, if you're not seriously interested in religion, very good. A little going to temple or church or mandir and then fine. And that's not really centered, central to your life. But if you're seriously interested, does God really exist? Can I experience it? Then the first reaction often is skepticism. All this seems to be just belief. Who has realized this and what, what, is, what does this all this mean? So many people who come to Vedanta often start off as skeptics, as agnostic. Then they find something satisfying in Advaita Vedanta. So one problem with the God-centered religion, theistic religion, is doubt. Big problem. All throughout the history of faith-based religions, you will find this problem. You notice in all the faith-based religions, there will be a struggle to prove the existence of God. In Christianity, um, Thomas Aquinas gives five ways, five proofs for the existence of God. In our own Hindu tradition, when they had a nearly thousand year debate with the Buddhists, so the Hindu Nayaikas, they were trying to prove the existence of Ishwara. Udayanacharya, Nyaya Kusumanjali gives nine proofs of the existence of God. So why this desperate attempt? The very attempt that you're trying to prove the existence of God shows that is it is threatened, that it is based on faith and you need to convince yourself. Many great sadhakas, bhaktas, they're often assailed by doubts. I am worshipping God, but there is I cry out, there is no response. You know who said that? Mother Teresa, towards the end of her life, in a diary. I cry out into the darkness, there is only silence, doubt. Somebody who is a devout Christian all her life, very good, no doubt, but at the end of her life, she is writing, only silence is there, this is doubt. This is a big problem in the path of faith. And I, if, you, if you listen to a few uh, talks by Richard Dawkins and Sam Harris and Christopher Hitchens and Daniel Dennett, the whole structure will collapse. <laughs> doubt whereas the strength of the self-inquiry based religion thumb based religion is that there is no doubt at all nobody ever doubts one's own existence has anybody ever written books and books to pr prove 10 proofs of the existence of myself and 9 proofs of the existence of myself nonsense <laughs> that will be so silly who has ever had a doubt whatever I am I exist 
that was the fundamental which Descartes found in his great project of doubt. Let me doubt everything possible to come down to the foundation of knowledge. One thing indubitable. And you know what he found? I exist. How? Because I think. Cogito ergo sum. I think, therefore I exist. There's a funny joke is there. Descartes goes to a Paris cafe and uh, the waitress comes and says, more coffee, Monsieur Descartes? He says, I think not. And he disappeared. I think, therefore I exist. So I think not, he disappeared. So I think, because of my own thinking, that is indubitable. If I think, if I doubt that I do not exist, that also requires my own existence to doubt it. Shankaracharya says, Yaevasya nirakarta tasseva atma sa. The one who denies the existence of Atma, that is the Atma of that very denier. How can consciousness deny itself? To deny something, you require consciousness. So that is one indubitable thing. I exist. So that is the great advantage. There is certainty about the subject matter of inquiry. In theistic religion, the matter of inquiry is under doubt. At all, God is there or not. Who knows? We are spending all our time on this. But in inquiry into self, no doubt, we exist. Now, what is the great disadvantage of the self-inquiry based method? The great disadvantage is no doubt that I exist, but that's the problem. My own existence is the problem. It's surrounded by so many problems. I have financial problem. I have health problem. I have family problem. I have COVID problem. So many problems. I solve one, ten more coming in each place. And finally, death is there. So my existence is surrounded and threatened by problems. That is the big problem of the self-inquiry based. It is no great thing to say that I exist. So what? My existence is the problem. I would rather commit suicide, then the problem will be solved. So that is the great problem in the self-inquiry uh, method, that the self which indubitably exists is very limited, is threatened, insecure. Whereas the advantage of the God-based approach, if God exists, God has no problem. Uh, omniscient, omnipotent, omnipresent, glorious. God is fine if God exists. And that is a big problem. The problem there is doubt, but the advantage is omniscience, omnipotence, glory. There is no problem at all. Infinite nature of God. Ishwara is fine if Ishwara exists. In our case, I exist, no doubt about it. You, yesterday we saw the in the um, Jahad Jahad Lakshana, the contrary thing is the one is that the Jiva Chaitanya is Aparoksha Chaitanya. Ishwara Chaitanya is Paroksha Chaitanya. Paroksha means dependent on faith, not directly revealed to us. Our own existence directly revealed to us all the time. We are aware of ourselves. But the problem is it's a very limited existence, terrible existence. That's why we are here in Vedanta, to solve our problem. That's why Buddha became Buddha, to overcome suffering. Suffering is there. Now, here is the conclusion, the whole discussion about what am I driving at? Here is the extraordinary beauty of Advaita. Extraordinary, stunning, if you think about it. Advaita takes the advantages of both methods and cancels out the disadvantages of both. It takes the certainty of your self-existence. Self it starts with that. Who am I? Starts with aham. Starts with tvam. Starts with ayamatma. Starts with pragyanam. And then shows that absolutely certain indubitable self-existence to be the infinite. It takes it to the, the infinitude of God is combined with the certainty of the self. To reveal a certain and infinite self. You get absolute certainty with absolute security. Directly. There is no doubt about it. And there is no problem associated with it. If you get it. If one gets it. Even if one gets a, a clarity of, about you know, just the understanding itself at the level of Shravana. You begin to see that. Infinite certainty with infinite um, you know, like freedom from problems. That is the reality revealed by Advaita. That is the deep meaning of Mahavakya. Tvam, certain. Tat, infinite. So infinite certainty. Aham, certain. I know. Brahma, infinity. Infinite certainty. Um, Pragyanam, certain. Brahma, infinite. Infinite certainty. Ayam Atma, I, certain, it's there. Brahma, infinity, infinite certainty. This is the meaning of the Mahavakya. Again, you might say a wonderful insight. I, can, I cannot claim any bit of it, 
this i got from one swami akhandananda saraswati um, he is writings are uh, available only in hindi unfortunately but great great uh, scholar and saint uh, 1960 70s i never met him but i read the hindi writings good we are done we have run out of time also now